Hello, this is Rich Vessel, founder of Advanced Projections, with our December 2023 economic report. Here's our review of the economic data highlights for November and early December of 2023. This is part of our final report for the year. Employment figures for November came in with a modest new jobs figure up 199,000 with unemployment back down to 3.7%. Much of this was uh, contributions from the uh, auto workers strikes ending and also the SAG-AFTA uh, strikes ending. So that put about 50,000 people back to work. We still expect unemployment to gradually move upwards over 4%. At levels below 4%, we continue to expect the Fed to stay fully focused on inflation, given this as permission for further actions if necessary. Employment is a lagging indicator in the business cycle, so it typically declines after a downturn has begun. We have a couple of charts in our uh, the front end of our written report, which show how unemployment behaves ahead of recessions. And we took out, snipped out the COVID issue from the second chart so we can see how things are actually continuing from what they were doing uh, late in 2019 and early 2020. Annual CPI inflation through November was announced on December 14th with the actual reported value at 3.1% in line with expectations. Additionally, the core CPI that leaves out volatile food and energy prices was still 4%, and sticky inflation prices, uh, less food and energy, continued high in November at 4.73%. Both of these are about double what the Fed wants to see. As oil prices have moved down over the past few weeks, recently breaking below $70 a barrel and hovering in that territory, it will likely be shaving a bit off the headline CPI inflation numbers in the months ahead if the prices stay low as they are now. Federal Reserve FOMC maintained their paused rate hike program after last increasing their Fed funds rate on July 26th. So this key interest rate remains at five and a quarter to five and a half percent. Commensurate with this last FOMC meeting in December, the Fed issued a new set of dot plot projections for 2023 through 26 where they imply that their rate hikes have ceased for this cycle, and that there is now some potential for two to three quarter point cuts in the wind for 2024. The continuing solid employment picture is likely to confirm that scenario. In June, the Fed had essentially promised two more rate hikes in the second half of this year, and July's was the first. We now consider the low probability of one more surprise increase as core inflation and the sticky inflation numbers are still double where the Fed wants to see them. This final increase may come any time between now and the end of second quarter 2024, but the probability of it actually happening is now less than 50%, as long as the core and sticky numbers continue their tenaciously slow declines. The S&P 500 re-entered bubble territory once again. A significant equity run-up in November continued in the first half of December. New cries of, quote, the Fed is done, reignited equities right after the December 13th FOMC meeting announcements hit the streets, and equities headed right up to penetrate the last highs set in August. At this moment, we, don't, uh, we won't speculate if the last two weeks of this year will end with a bang or a whimper from equities. We do expect some irrational exuberance for a week or two, but then realistic outlooks for the economy and fourth quarter corporate earnings should again take hold of equity pricing, even as measures of overconfidence have again returned to very high levels at, that we experienced back in July. Our indicator system keeps our recession risk level at approximately 90% due to still declining leading economic indicators but less hawkish Federal Reserve monetary policy signals and ongoing red AP indicators. 
Two AP indicators are just barely showing yellow and the other four are still red. So here are the current underlying economic details. Year-over-year -year consumer price index increases and tight labor markets continue to characterize our economy. General expectations out just ahead of uh, this November CPI announcement were for 3.1% year-over-year inflation, and it came in at 3.1%. Back in July, the Federal Reserve completed the first of the two rate increases uh, promised for the second half of this year as the underlying sticky inflation numbers were not coming down as rapidly and employment had not yet turned to a negative trend. Consumers are still spending massively, even as consumer confidence readings continue to drop, and they have accumulated record amounts of credit card debt, now exceeding a trillion dollars. Bureau of Labor Statistics reports unemployment remains below 4% and has dipped back to 3.7%, with new job gains in November of 199,000. We had expected those gains earlier this year, but now there are the first glimpses of a small employment slowdown, which began in August. All employment numbers are still higher than a year ago, including the labor force participation rate and the total numbers of employed persons, with November's employment picture benefiting from the resolution of strikes affecting auto workers, as well as screenwriters and actors. Uh, we've included the Bureau of Labor Statistics Summary Table A as we do each month to show you how the numbers have moved. Now, this currently solid employment situation continues to keep the Fed free to be as aggressive as they deem necessary in their scripts for rates and their plans for unwinding their balance sheet, thus decreasing the money supply. They implied the rate increases have come to an end and there's been a token reduction in the Fed's balance sheet from, by, from about $8.4 to $7.7 trillion. But clearly much more needs to be done in that regard. In the energy picture, OPEC plus Russia had previously agreed to additional production cuts in April and August to support prices for their oil. The markets had responded by gradually moving oil up over $91 a barrel, then retreating slightly to about $90. Global demand forecasts have reversed rapidly and oil took a rapid dive to the bottom of our expected volatile range, which we had stated was $75 to $95 a barrel. Gasoline prices in the USA had defied the overall increases in oil prices and remained in the lower $3 zone over the past couple of months due to reduced demand and plentiful supplies. Declining demand has been cited as the force driving oil prices back, first to the mid-70s and then lower yet. Gasoline backed down towards $3 a gallon in much of the USA. A new production cut announcement uh, just came out from OPEC, but traders are waiting to see if these will be significant enough to support and improve prices. The November 30th announcement by OPEC Plus claims agreement on voluntary production cuts, which are to begin January 1st, 2024, of an additional 2.7 million barrels per day in cuts. It now remains to be seen whether those will affect crude prices to any significant degree. Without some geopolitical disruption perceived to be significant, we don't see crude prices now moving any higher than the upper $70 per barrel, and further demand weaknesses could just as easily drive prices down to the low 60s. Natural gas prices have generally declined significantly from the high levels seen at the end of the summer of 2022. As of this writing, Henry Hub prices are down over 50% from the same date last year, Production has clearly overtaken demand again, even with the U.S. exportation of record amounts of LNG, that's liquefied natural gas, in the past several months. Daily gas production in the U.S. is approaching 105 billion cubic feet per day, which is astounding. That should also eventually relieve electric power production costs as natural gas accounts for about 40% of the U.S. generation mix. Winter heating bills for gas users will also be significantly lower than last year. Underground storage reserves are already at the high end of their five-year average range, so prices should remain moderate throughout a winter which is again anticipated 
to be warmer than average. For our complete monthly macroeconomic report, including current recession indicators and recession probabilities, you can get free member access via the link in the description below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for pertinent economic updates. Thank you. Feel free to leave any questions you may have in the comments below.